welcome to my presentation. I'm Xu Pinghua from Wuhan University. My presentation concerns my recent work about signed net, network embedding. It's a do joint you, work. Pinghua, do you want to put in the presentation presenters mode? Uh, uh, sorry, I, I can't hear you clearly. Uh, you could put it in the presenter's mode. Right now you're in the editing mode. Okay, let me try. There you go. Yep. Yeah, okay. Okay, it's a joint work uh, with Zhang Yibing from Jingdong Explore Academy, Liu Liu and Yu Bao Sun from the University of the Sydney, uh, Wu Jia from Macquarie University, Du Bo and Hu Wenbing from Wuhan University. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce some background knowledge about signed network embedding. Compared with uh, traditional plane networks, signed networks contain edges with positive or negative weights. So we can use them to model some real applications such as a trading platform with trust ratings or a social network with friendship or antagonism. Moreover, there are some special social theories based on saying the networks. For example, uh, according to the structural balance theory, if node I can easily reach node J uh, along balance path, node I is supposed to have strong positive proxy, proximity to node J. And if node I can easily reach node J along unbalanced path, Node I is supposed to have strong negative proximity to Node J. In many cases, uh, side network embedding aims to learn low dimensional vector representation for each node, such that the signed proximity information can be preserved. Uh, inspired by the works on NLP, many competitive embedding masters build upon scapegram model which essentially estimate the sampling density ratio. Uh, this formula shows a typical objective function. The first part tries to preserve the positive proximity, and the second part tries to preserve the negative proximity. The intuition is to make two nodes with strong positive proximity close and two nodes with strong negative proximity far away in the embedded space. Uh, while the competitive existing methods based on density ratio estimation are limited to three issues. Uh, the first one is a confusing sample issue. We notice that with this objective, a shared embedding space is used to pre preserve positive and negative proximities simultaneously. Therefore, many examples that can be sampled from PD plus have the same optimization target with the samples from uh, PD plus. And this will break a desirable relationship between the representation in the product and the strength of proximity. So to solve this issue, a simple but effective way is to preserve positive and negative proximities within two independent embedding spaces. Uh, look at this graph feature and you will find the advantage of the idea to use independent embedding spaces. Uh, typically, we sample node pairs using random work and then optimize the representations following the objective. However, Existing works prove the optimal representations cannot be obtained by optimization with limited samples. Thus, we have the expected error issue. Uh, look at this figure. We can find the true sampling density of a node uh, on the top and how the density is approximated by different numbers of samples. A larger W indicates more samples are available. So if we have quite a lot of samples, the learned representations are closer to the optimal ones. However, in real world applications, only limited samples are available. So existing methods using density ratio estimation 
it will suffer from the expected error. And the last issue is about the noise sampling density or negative sampling density. Existing empirical investigations suggest that a good noise sampling density should have the following properties in principle. The first one is simplicity. The density should be easily accessible. If a sampling strategy is rather complicated, it will take much additional time to calculate the corresponding density and make the embedding method inefficient to real-world applications. The optimization with noise samples can be seen as a regularization of the model, which help to adjust the relative position of the anchor node with respect to all the other nodes. Therefore, the density should see all nodes rather than only a small portion of them. Moreover, from the perspective of contrast, the density should reflect that to what extent the node will not be picked out as data samples. Existing works purely rely on a fixed priori to generate Lloyd samples. For example, the uniform and the degree-based densities. None of them implement the three good properties simultaneously. So these issues motivate our work and we design a dual branch density ratio estimation architecture to solve these issues. In one branch, we try to preserve the positive proximity. And in another one, we preserve the negative proximity. Note, we do not assume the same network structure for the two branches, which makes the architecture more flexible. For instance, the encoders may have different, the two encoders may have different numbers of layers or neurons uh, next to avoid, the, to avoid the expected error. We replace the explicit sampling with matrix factorization. Motivated by the method NetMF, we directly calculate the shifted density ratios in terms of a matrix without sampling. And we then, <clears throat> and then the representations can be calculated by directly factorizing the matrix. For example, we can calculate the data sampling densities PD plus and uh, PD minus by these equations. Moreover, we propose the cross noise sampling to solve the last issue. Uh, the, our noise sampling is based on the assumption that if node I has stronger positive proximity to node J, then node I has weaker negative proximity to node J. Mm. But for example, if node I is more likely to trust node J, we can believe that node I is less likely to distrust node J. This assumption is in line with the intuition and also consistent with the empirical investigation on the structural balance theory. With this assumption, we use information within each branch to get the noise sampling within another branch. Specifically, these formulas show the noise densities in the B plus one's epic. We conducted extensive experiments to uh, validate the effectiveness of the proposed DDRE. First, we investigated whether DDRE outperforms the methods based on density ratio estimation. Uh, we performed the sign prediction task on four real world signed networks and the node classification task on three artificial signed networks. Given this table, the answer to the first question is definitely yes. Uh, next, we investigate is DDRE competitive compared with the method based on graph likelihood, GAN, and GCN. We followed the same experimental settings as those used for the first investigation. Although not the best in every experiment, the table shows 
uh, DDRE is really competitive. We then investigate whether the dual branch network uh, expected matrix factorization and cross noise sampling improve the performance of DDRE. So we conducted ablation studies and illustrated the results in this figure. The figure indicates that the, uh, the effective length of each module in our method. We also investigate how does DDRE perform if we only use the representations of a single branch. This figure shows in most cases, it is better to combine the representations of the two branches for downstream tasks. And you can find another interesting phenomenon. The performance curves tend to be stable after only one or two epochs. It indicates DDRE can be very efficient. So at last, we report the training time of uh, the training time of DDRE for three training epochs on an artificial data set. And we compare the training time of DDRE with the competitive GCNs. The training epochs of uh, SNEA and SDGN are set to five, though so more epochs are needed for them to achieve good performance. The figure shows DDRE is really efficient compared with the GCN methods. So in conclusion, in this work, we investigated three main issues that limit the density ratio estimation for signed network embedding. We designed the dual branch network, expected matrix factorization, and cross noise sampling to solve these issues. And together, we propose a method DDRE. Uh, the experimental evidence suggests DDRE significantly outperforms the methods based on density ratio and achieves competitive performance compared with the methods based on graph likelihood, GAN, and GCN. Uh, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pinghua. Um, may I ask uh, whether we have questions from the audience? Okay, no questions. Um, I do have one. I mean, uh, Pinghua, your signed network basically is just a quantized network, seems to me, uh, because you could have discrete value and then you have only two discrete value. Uh, can you generalize that your signed network is, uh, can be seen as a quantized network? And if so, if that's the case, then the next question is, yeah, you could have compared it with any embedding and, uh, you know, and, and, and do a comparison. So what is uh, really the advantage of that? Uh, I know you split this into positive and negative, but can you do this with other quantized network, say plus phi, minus phi, and so on and so forth? Uh, in my opinion, the um, basic difference between signed networks and the other play networks uh, are the edge ways. Uh, uh, and more importantly, uh, some social theories can be only applied to sign networks rather than the other networks. Uh, for example, uh, the mentioned structural balance theory and status theory. So it is not very easy to uh, transfer the methods based on the playing networks to sign networks. No, but, I mean, you, but the point is that your sign in network is only like plus one and minus one as your weight, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, so uh, a, gener a general, a generic network has all that, but this seems to be just a one special uh, case of a generic network. That's all I'm trying to say. And I don't know what your network is trying to take advantage of it. That's all. Okay. You know. Uh, 
the core point I think is to design the methods uh, in consistency with the social series uh, based on signed networks. And okay. yeah, and mm. so I mean, you, you're saying that your network is faster, but then can your network generalize to more than two, like plus one, two, three, and minus one, two, three? Yeah, yeah, it can. It can be any numerical weights. Okay, if that's the case, then can it be generated to plus one, two, three, four, five, all the way to infinity? And in that case, you almost have a, you know, a, 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 a generic network. Yeah, I think you, hmm, you point out a very good research direction. 